Good morning. I wanted to bring an encouraging word to you today. Let you know God loves you. He's known you since you were in your mother's womb. He cares for you, and uh, he answers prayer. God loved us in the beginning. He gave his son, Jesus, and uh, we're so thankful for that. But we're living in a fallen world, and in that fallen world, we're subject to things like what's going on today. Even though we're the righteous, uh, we're subject to the possibility of, of this causing a problem for us. But we're trusting God and trusting God to heal people, trusting God to protect people, and we're being using wisdom and prudence. Uh, Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Isaiah 53, verse 1 says, Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, uh, and like a root out of the dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hid would hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. Another version, by his stripes we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray and each one turned to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. It's sad. And, he, and who can speak of his descendants for he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of my people. He was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. That was for us. It's God's will that Jesus died on that cross. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering for us, a guilt offering. He will see his offspring, prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. And after the suffering of his soul, listen to this, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many. That's you and me. Justify means it's a, really an accounting word that balances the books. To justify is to think of it this way, just as if you hadn't sinned. That's what Jesus did. And he will bear their iniquities. Not only sin, but iniquities. The, the scars of sin, the stains of sin. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Aren't you glad for Isaiah chapter 53, so many years before Jesus came and died on that cross prophesied. And one of the reasons we know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, God the Son, and he loves us. And I want you to know today, there is no fear in the perfect love of God, the Bible says. And so if you know God loves you perfectly, you know he's got you in his hands. Don't fear. It'll be okay. But also use prudence, wisdom. Some people are all faith and no love, are all love and no faith. Um, there, Some people are, are all wisdom and no spirit. God wants us to have it all. And right now we need wisdom and we need direction of the Holy Spirit. And we need to know that God loves us and love each other and forgive each other. And let's make our hearts right with God. And let's start valuing the church more, valuing beyond measure. And when we come back together, it's going to be the best Sunday ever, ever we've had. You wait. 
Let's all do it. Let's forgive each other and let's be the church. I love every one of you. Jesus, please heal those that need healing and be with those that need uh, your comfort and your encouragement, God. Make provision for everybody that that uh, is uh, listening today and, and those that aren't, God. And may uh, this, uh, this word of encouragement really by your spirit make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen.